Hey guys, today we're going to talk about vitamin B deficiency, okay? Uh, this is actually way more common than you might think. Uh, the problem is when you do testing on this, uh, a lot of times it won't show up in the blood because the problem or the defect is in the enzyme that allows B1 to work. Um, and just if you wanted to get it tested, uh, the enzyme you would um, get tested for would be transketolase. Okay, it's just an enzyme that works with B1 in doing its function. Okay, so, um, but the problem is trying to find a lab that will test it. It's quite um, difficult. But anyway, here's what B1 does generally. It does a lot of things, but it's involved in five different enzymes. It's a cofactor in five enzymes. Enzymes are the things that do the work in the body. They're the workhorse. It's involved in all sorts of bio, body, chemistry, or chemical reactions, especially in the mitochondria, which is an energy factory. So B1 is essential to make those enzymes work. So if you're deficient in B1, the enzymes don't work and you're gonna get fatigue is probably the most common symptom. When you take vitamin B1, it seems to bring your energy right up most of the time. And instead of going out and getting a test, it's much cheaper just to take B1 and see if you feel better. You, chances are you're gonna feel better. So in the next section, I'll talk about uh, where to get B1 and how much to take. But in this section, I'm gonna talk about how many different systems it's involved with. B1 deficiency is called beriberi, and it's uh, known as the great mimicker of disease because it mimics so many other body situations. It's incredible. It's very widespread. Uh, I think probably if you are pre-diabetic, if you have insulin resistance, if you're a diabetic, you have a B1 deficiency. If you drink alcohol on a regular basis, you probably have a B1 deficiency. If you have a high carbohydrate diet, you probably have a B1 deficiency because that's how you develop a B1 deficiency. So you definitely need B1 when you actually digest carbohydrates. So too many refined carbs are gonna deplete that. Uh, so it's involved in making energy. It's also involved in protecting the cell and the mitochondria against oxidation or free radicals. It's kind of considered an antioxidant. It also protects the cell against glycation, which is basically when you combine a sugar with a protein or a sugar with a fat, it, it develops like sticky protein. It also protects you against developing amyloid placking in the brain. That's what you see in Alzheimer's. So it's kind of like a, a protein that clogs up the brain's neural function. Um, there's an incredible book um, by Dr. Derek Longsdale, MD. It's, I, I got the Kindle book. It was like $79, very expensive, well worth it. I could not stop reading it. Fascinating. Now, the first system I'm going to talk about is the cardiovascular and respiratory system. These are some of the symptoms that you can develop if you're B1 deficient. An enlarged heart, because the heart has to work harder. And then what happens is the heart gets bigger and bigger. Uh, increased pulse rate. Edema, usually in the lower uh, ankles and things. So you press uh, your lower ankle and you get this indentation. You see that a lot in diabetics microvascular damage. Your nerves need a blood supply. So if you're deficient in B1, you're going to starve the food supply to the nervous system. That's why you see something called peripheral neuropathy, tingling, burning, and numbness, uh, and pain in your fingertips or the bottom of your feet. Okay, so now let's go to the digestive system. You'll feel a full sensation in your stomach, like you're always kind of stuffed. You can get constipated. Gastroparesis. Now, what is that? That's a condition where your digestive system is very sluggish. Food's going through very, very slow. GERD, which is kind of like a, the valve on the top of the stomach doesn't close and you get acid that comes up through this way. Now, these two conditions really come from low stomach acids, hydrochloric acid. And so vitamin B1 deficiency will create a situation where you have a lower HCL, hydrochloric acid, thereby causing a sluggishness in the digestive system and causing GERD because it takes an acid stomach to keep that valve closed, okay? So you can see that it's just so widespread. It just goes way over here and it goes way over here. Uh, and then the nervous system, we talked about peripheral neuropathy, but just neuritis in general, any type of nerve pain or nerve damage that's occurring, B B1 is very intimately involved in that. Okay, vertigo, which is kind of a dizziness when you actually stand up too fast or even when you're standing, and you feel like you know, you're on a ship, that could be coming from a B1 deficiency. And then it affects something called the autonomic nervous system. This is like the, the combination between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. 
And these are the two systems that work um, on automatic. So they do a lot of different things. So you can imagine how many different symptoms can occur from a problem within this system. It's very widespread. Uh, lack of tears, okay? Uh, excessive sweating or no sweating, okay? A lot of people have that and they don't really know what it is and it's hard to find the cause of that, but usually it's a B1 deficiency. Anxiety, especially nervous tension, can't relax, excessive thinking, brain fog, exercise intolerance. I mean, how many people have a, a resistance to exercise, right? They, they just don't feel like they have the energy to exercise, B1. Insomnia, you can't sleep. A condition called POTS. POTS is a condition where um, your, your um, ability to adapt to gravity and positional change is like completely ruined because the autonomic nervous system, especially the sympathetic nervous system is dysfunctional. So when you stand up, the blood flow does not um, keep up into the brain and you just get dizzy all the time. So you basically have to lay around all day. You can't quite get up and down without feeling dizzy. So uh, these people um, absolutely positively should never go on a roller coaster because that would really uh, mess them up. But this is a B1 deficiency. Fascinating. Uh, sleep apnea, because the nerves that are affected um, in the brainstem control the respiratory centers. So if those are not working because there's not enough B1, uh, you can have problems breathing. And even just breathing in general is going to be a problem. Like you're going to feel like you can't get enough air. And that's for not just for this reason. There's a couple other ones we'll get to. Panic attacks. B1 deficiency. Nightmares at night, classic B1 deficiency. Lack of stamina, just, you know, especially when you're exercising, you just, you just, you don't feel like you want to exercise because you just run out of gas real fast. Why? Because B1 is an intimately involved in five enzymes in your mitochondria. So if those enzymes aren't working, your mitochondria is tired. And all the different um, autoimmune diseases usually have a common symptom of fatigue. That's usually the B1. So if you have Hashimoto's or MS and you're tired, take some B1 and see if you don't just feel a lot better. A buildup of lactic acid. See, B1 helps get rid of lactic acid, which is a byproduct of, of something in your metabolism in the mitochondria. So if you don't have B1, you can't clear it out. So you build up lactic acid. You get this condition called lactic acidosis. So you see that in a restless leg syndrome. You see that too in people that have problems breathing. If you're a diabetic, for example, and you're taking metformin, one of the uh, side effects is lactic acidosis. That's why they actually have a black label, which is a more severe label that it can cause this condition. Well, the reason why it causes that condition is because one of the side effects of metformin is a B1 deficiency. Make sense? So you can't get rid of the lactic acid, so it builds up and the, the, you start becoming more acidic and then you have breathing problems. Recurrent ear infections, interesting. You have a problem with excess estrogen. Uh, the worst type of estrogen you can have uh, too much of is estradiol. So without uh, enough B, you, you can't clear it out because one of the functions of B1 is to get rid of excess estradiol from your liver. Okay, this next one, let me explain, it's called Ross. Uh, I'm not gonna get into exactly what it is, but just realize it's, an, it's like a free radical oxidation particle, okay? And it's developed by your cells, and um, B1 helps to reduce that oxidation. Remember, it's an antioxidant. So you'll have uh, greater amounts of Ross if you don't have enough B1. Now, when a woman is pregnant and she's delivering a baby, uh, there's a condition called toxemia, which is very dangerous for the baby and the mother. The organs start becoming toxic and um, the heart becomes a problem. The kidneys become an issue, high blood pressure, and even it's life-threatening as well. So B1 will help prevent toxemia. Okay, so the beta cells of the pancreas are affected. Those are the cells in the, in the pancreas that basically make insulin. So without enough B1, you're not going to make enough insulin. If you're a type 1 diabetic, you need a lot of insulin because diabetics, they can't really absorb B1 too well, so they have to take even more uh, than the, the average healthy person. 
Okay, so stress buildup. So when you don't have enough B, you're going to be highly irritable, edgy. Little things will bug you. You won't have very much tolerance for stress. And a condition called SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. That's a B1 deficiency because the infant just stops breathing in, in his or her sleep. It's B1 because of the B1 effect of the respiratory centers. Okay, so let's go to the next part. Okay, so now why would you be deficient, okay? Mainly sugar, refined sugar, empty calories. If you take two diabetics, okay, and they're both consuming sugar, and one is deficient in B1, but the other one's not, this diabetic will experience a lot of the complications of diabetes. This one will experience a lot less. So B1 helps prevent the damage, or at least the complications or the symptoms from high sugar, okay? Carbs in general, because the more carbs you consume, the more B1 you need to uh, metabolize those carbs. Uh, white rice, and I, this is a carb, but I wanted to put this there because it's really how they um, discovered uh, beriberi, uh, white rice, and um, uh, all the B vitamins are on the, the, the hull, okay? So when you actually take the hull out, so brown rice has the hull, so they take it out, and then you have this just pure carbohydrate white rice, and then you consume that, and you, you create a vitamin B1 deficiency. That's why if you actually consume rice hulls, you would get B1 from that. But this is the waste product of the white rice. Alcohol, that depletes B1 big time. Also heat, like in pasteurization or cooking food, you're going to destroy B1. Aging, the older you are, the lower B1 you're going to have. All right, diabetes, okay, so diabetics. Um, are nearly always deficient in B1. That's because B1 is intimately involved in the cell that makes insulin, okay? So if we have a problem with that, then we're gonna actually have a deficiency. Uh, something called polyphenols, that would be coffee, tea, and wine. So if you consume a lot of coffee or tea, uh, don't be surprised if you end up with a B1 deficiency. Uh, especially if you get that jittery, if you drink a lot of coffee and you feel that jittery, that feeling, you just take some B1, it goes away within about four minutes. Okay, gastric bypass. Uh, you're going to have a deficiency of B1 simply because they're, they're taking out the first part of the small intestine. Well, guess where B1 is absorbed? The first part of the small intestine. If you had a, a gastric bypass, I would recommend taking more B1 to somehow get it absorbed. Okay, sulfites can create also a B1 deficiency and also raw fish. If you have liver damage, you're not going to be able to absorb uh, the B1 as well. Antiacids and antibiotics also deplete vitamin B1. Caffeine will deplete it. And if you don't have enough stomach acid, you also will not be able to absorb B1. But it also takes B1 to actually help you make stomach acid. So it's kind of like it goes back and forth. Vaccinations can trigger a B1 deficiency and give the person POTS, okay? There's a certain uh, vaccine. I'm not going to get into it too much, but you can look it up. Uh, you'll find a lot of data on it, but vaccinations will deplete your B1. Now, the foods that are high in B1 would be liver, yeast, both baker's yeast and nutritional yeast. Uh, I, I like the nutritional yeast uh, a little bit better because um, the taste of baker's yeast is not that great, and also it's hard to find the quality. Uh, I, now, as far as the source of B1, I like the nutritional yeast, unfortified. Uh, I'm not opposed to you taking B1 by itself, even if it's synthetic, as long as you take either a natural source of B, B vitamins with it, or if you just take nutritional yeast with it, because anytime you take like one single vitamin over a long period of time, it could deplete or throw out of balance the other factors because vitamin B is a complex. It has a lot of different vitamins. Pork is high in B1. Eggs, fish, sunflower seeds, rice hulls, squash, asparagus, and seafood, okay? And again, if you wanted to know the test that will determine if you're B1 deficiency, transketolase. Okay, that's the name of it. It's hard to find a lab that will do that on you. Uh, tender calves, that's a good way to pick it up. If you reach down and you grab your calf and it's real tender, you could have a B1 deficiency. And increase effort to exercise. So it really takes a tremendous amount of effort to start exercise. So you just don't have that get up and go mojo. Okay and then take some B1. And then if you feel better and all of a sudden now you can exercise, then you're good to go. Personally, when I exercise, I take uh, B1. I might take like 100 milligrams, 
but then I'll take some nutritional yeast at the same time and I'll, I'll go exercise on my bike. And I notice when I take the B1, I can go a lot further. In fact, I probably can double the workout and I just feel like my body just has to exercise. It's very interesting. And that's basically kicking in that, um, that mitochondria, benfotamine, okay? That's a fat soluble version of B1. It is synthetic. However, um, there hasn't been any uh, side effects known uh, when they study this. So I think this is totally fine. But again, make sure you take your nutritional yeast with it just to make sure you have the whole balance. But benfotamine is really important with people that have nerve problems or Alzheimer's or any Parkinson's or any type of damage to the brain with memory because it innervates the brain 25 times more than the regular um, B1 that you would get that's water soluble because what they did is they made B1 into a fat soluble so it penetrates the brain which is all fat and the nerves so it's great for peripheral neuropathy. So if you were going to take benfotamine, uh, I would just take four tablets or I think they come in capsules uh, just through the day and uh, you're probably going to see some great results, especially uh, if someone has Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or memory problems, you're going to see some great improvement or peripheral neuropathy. All right, I know it's a very long video, but I wanted to give you all the aspects of B1. It's a very vital vitamin. Thanks for watching. So I want to know about what you think about this video. So please comment below and tell me what you think.